this panel, we're going to talk about the eight step framework to successfully validate mobile app and game ideas. Today, we're sitting with Nadia Narazova, head of product at Split Metrics, as well as Hagar Seri, head of ASO and mobile at Moburst. Guys, welcome to the panel. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. I'm Nadia. Uh, I'm head of product for Split Metrics Optimize. And uh, what I want, I want to start with a question why even validate? So, why do you have to? Uh, you have a crazy idea or even not so crazy. Why couldn't you just implement it in the production and live with it? Uh, why do you have to validate? And answer that actually lies in the competition because in uh, according to recent statistics, uh, it's more than uh, three and a half million apps, apps just in Google Play. And uh, it's more like almost... 2 million apps in App Store. And with a competition that is so huge, you have to be sure that you doing everything right and you find the best concept, you find the best creatives for your audience. And here I have a small task for you. So uh, it's uh, our client, uh, Silly's Game. They uh, test uh, a an icon with us. So you see in the left, it was the current icon and uh, A, B, and C, it was the options that was uh, in a testing. So just try to guess which icon wins, like A, B, or C. So I see lots of experts in dating apps in the chat. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see the right answer. The right answer actually was A. Uh, the A icon shows the mechanic of the game, and most uh, most of the, the audience would interested in the mechanic of the game. Uh, so, uh, like this shows why you have to validate. Uh, and the idea of validation helps you to reduce the risk of developing a game or an app that won't attract users and helps you to save your money, time, and resources. And in other words, it helps you to increase your chances to succeed. And in Split Metrics, we create a framework, an A/B testing framework, and we offer uh, this framework to all our clients. And uh, we share this framework. It helps you to uh, start testing uh, with minimum risk, and uh, it contains of eight steps. And me and Hagar, we will uh, explain how to uh, what to do on each step and show you some uh, tricks and examples for each step. Hagar, you could start. Yes, of course. So we start with um, obviously every time we want to start a CRO process or we want to optimize our creatives, uh, we start with research. And the research is done in, two, in three parts. And the first one would be market. The second one is competitors analysis. And the third one would be audience. So as mentioned, the first one is market research. And what you want to do is really to identify what is the main category that you want to work on and what is the main category of the app and what are the top uh, apps in that category. And we also want to check what platform is most popular in some regions. So even uh, let's say Google Play would work better in some regions than hardly used in others. So we really want to identify the region that we want to focus on at first and see what are the top apps, what are the most download apps in this category, how many downloads it takes uh, to get to the top of the category, is English enough uh, or you need to localize? All these questions will help you a lot before um, publishing your app. The second one part would be competitors research, which is of course, after you identify your market and the region you wanna focus on, uh, you want to test and to see what competitors are doing, uh, what creators they're using, and most importantly, what they're not using anymore. So we want to identify uh, their A-B tests and see what they implemented and what they haven't. Um, it's really important to understand the colors of the category, the elements, messaging, tone, anything like that, that is really, there are trends, you know, with each category you have trends. So we really want to understand them uh, after we, we were doing the competitor's research. So we have some examples such as uh, on the left, you see some uh, signing apps, signature apps. So you see the, the motive of the signature is repeating throughout uh, the competitors and we're talking about big competitors or small, we really want to see what the uh, really the, the category is uh, using. 
On the right, you see uh, karaoke apps where you see a really um, dominant use of purple and blue and microphones that are really repeating in all of the icons. So we really want to see what creatives are repeating themselves. And we want to do that for two reasons. The first would, would be to uh, you know, go with the flow and really speak in similar visual language to the category because it, it is working for our competitors. Or we want to stand out and make something that is completely unique. And this is really depending on the size of the app. Um, the third part would be audience research, which is very important. We do that uh, on the right. You have some tips about uh, from the metrics of how you will do uh, testing audience. I, on our side, we have a uh, full media team that is doing a, a, a thorough audience analysis. And then we use that when we do, um, let's say, testing on split metrics, and we want to identify what is the best um, category or audience that we want to use on our testing. But you really want to know, in general, age group, gender, interests, um, demographics, because this will help you um, really creating the best visuals for your app. Yeah, the next part, the next step uh, is an ideation step. And on this uh, step, you have to create a list of ideas, like any possible ideas that you could test. Uh, there are several options uh, that you can use. You could brainstorm, you could uh, live on data, uh, like internal data or competitor, uh, competitive analysis. Or if you just started and you're running out of inspiration, uh, we prepare a list of ideas for you. So it's here in the right side of the screen. You could uh, take a screenshot and use all these ideas in your A-B testing. When we go back to <laughs> yeah, user motivation, so after we do the research and the complete research, we want to see, we sit down with our creative team, with our research and best practices and guidelines from the app stores. And we really want to identify, okay, what is the best, what is the user motivation, the core motivation? And then we uh, start out uh, with concepts. So um, in this example, you have, uh, I don't know if you know, but it's a show um, called The Chosen. This is a show, show about Jesus' uh, life. And we really wanted to, to understand what users will be after. Are they looking to watch a TV show? And in this case, you have the streaming uh, motives that is more dark, uh, sort of Netflix, Hulu, that type of vibe. And on the right, you have um, more of faith. You know, this is the, the concept of faith. And you have like, landscapes and much more subtle, um, light, bright uh, design. And if you, if you want to guess, uh, but in this case, uh, the um, uh, streaming concept was the winner. So this is another example of how important it is to test the core motivation at first. And then after you see, after you test out the concept, you move forward to um, like more um, detailed, one element at a time, more fine tuning type of process. And this is what Nadia will cover. Also for uh, ideas. Mm -hmm don't try to think like big here it's not uh, it's not what you should do because even small changes uh, could bring you huge impact and uh, also several ideas you could start with test orientation option uh, tilted objects they pay uh, they attract attention and you could stand out against competitors if you tilt tilt some elements on an icon or even on a screenshot also uh, the other idea, you could place people and characters towards uh, and head oriented toward, towards the CTA bottom. So you uh, like manipulate the look of the user and uh, engage him to see, to follow the view and to press the get button or to screen, uh, to click on your screenshots. So it's all, you could also test, uh, test this idea and see how it works. Uh, next steps are hypothesis forming and variation, uh, very creating variations. So for hypothesis forming, uh, on the previous step, you had a list of ideas, and now it's time to create a hypothesis uh, based on this idea. And here, uh, here is the formula. You probably see it uh, somewhere. Uh, it's, it usually comes when uh, it, uh, it, it's mostly from product management, and hypothesis formula sounds like that. I believe that by doing something, we get some uh, uh, some outcome. And here you put the specific outcome that you want to get. 
and this outcome improves the metric. Uh, the and here you put the specific metric that you want to improve, because if you do not uh, use this formula, you will not be able to understand if uh, your A-B testing was successful or not, or uh, did it influence the right metric? Uh, do you want uh, to continue or you have to stop? So this uh, formula is, uh, is essential. Uh, here is some tricks, uh, tips from uh, our side. Uh, just do not uh, run several hypotheses uh, at a time. Just uh, try to uh, run one A-B test, uh, check one hypothesis and then move to the next one. And you, uh, and if you do have like a lot of ideas, a lot of hypotheses, uh, start with the first line elements. This means that uh, the elements that users see at the first screen uh, brings you more impact than like the 10th or like the last screenshot. So uh, start your testing with the first line elements. And when it comes to um, the next step, uh, you have to create several variations. Uh, if you do have like resources, uh, like designer team or agency, you have you are able to create lots of variations. If you're limited in resources, <clears throat> you could just uh, play with uh, uh, also with uh, the same uh, objects but uh, try to move it a little bit and see on uh, how it works on this screen. So also slightly changes, but they also could bring impact. Uh, and next you have to design your experiment. This, um, this step is about how will you organize your experiment. And here are several, several options uh, that you can use. So if you app already in a store, you could use the native test. So uh, thanks to Apple, <laughs> uh, uh, it was a year ago, actually. Uh, they release the custom product pages. Uh, Facebook already uh, con connect this uh, custom product pages. So, could, so could, you could run a test with uh, custom product pages. Or you could try in-app events and also try uh, these uh, native uh, solutions. If your app not in the store, you have just an idea or a concept, or you don't want to ruin your metrics in a real app, and you want to be absolutely sure that uh, your, like, your changes will work better, then you could uh, use tools like split metrics optimize uh, and try uh, emulated product uh, emulated uh, pages uh, here on the right uh, side of the screen uh, explains how it works so a user see the banner click on it and see the page uh, that looks exactly like uh, app store or google play and user like, interacted with this page in the same way that uh, interact in real store. If your app already in the store, you could lead user to store and uh, user will download your app. If you do not have app yet, you could end this test with quiz, poll, or like ask user something to, um, uh, to know, to learn more about the audience, to learn more about what uh, the user expect from your app or game and uh, collect uh, valuable data data for uh, your next uh, for your game or an app uh, you also could run test with web pages if you're like uh, if you do have some concept uh, just web page also could work and uh, sometimes if you're like running or running out of like resources and you want to research uh, audience more, you also could uh, at least try to run A-B testing in social media advertising. That also could be a way to, uh, all of this design, uh, experiment design is about uh, getting more information. So running tests in advertising could also bring you uh, valuable information about your audience uh, and you could implement it uh, uh, to the next steps uh, and to, uh, to run more A-B tests next. Uh, next step is result analysis. Uh, when you analyze the results, you have actually three options. If you do not see the significant, significant changes, uh, you just kill the experiment, relax, uh, this happens. Uh, so sometimes there is not, uh, nothing you could learn from the experiment. 
but if you see slightly uh, slightly difference uh, between the variations you could exclude the various performing variation and run uh, one more test uh, the iterating part is the most interesting one uh, it has one more option i will show it on the next slide but if you do have do see the significant change uh, your experiment successful, it's time to implement the results into production. And here also comes the tricky part because sometimes uh, people just, they see the, the significant changes in results in test and they just afraid to implement it. Just don't be afraid, you have to uh, implement it and see the results in the production. Uh, one more thing that I want to show you is, um, constant iteration. So if you get the great results implemented into production uh, and uh, like uh, see that, uh, see the increase in metrics, it's also not the time to stop. You could increase more and more. And here is uh, one of our clients, uh, my high school summer party app. And they, you see that pro they uh, constantly improved the icon and uh, in five months, they get like crazy increase in Google Play and also great results in App Store. So uh, do not stop. Uh, do not stop when you see the significant changes. Just think uh, and check if you want to improve more and more because if you see the increase in metrics, it probably you could probably get more increase. So we have uh, one more example. Um, of the concept phase, as we talked about before, this is from Food Network, and we wanted to test uh, enticing food versus top five shows. Uh, again, very different concepts. And the on the left, actually, the enticing food that was the winner. And from there, as Nadia mentioned before, we went on a more fine tuning process of uh, testing different elements and changing orientation, changing uh, USP order. Um, anything like that that can really help us optimizing the CVR in, along the way. Um, and this is once you have the uh, results uh, of, the, of the test. After that, you really want to make sure to share your findings. So uh, if you are working in a big agency or a company or even in a small group, you really want to make sure to um, share your findings share uh, what uh, creatives were working better for your uh, audience and really make sure to learn from each other's mistakes and not really repeating the same mistakes, but uh, moving forward to make sure the app uh, will succeed. And we are running a bit late, so uh, we try to speed up the next phase, which is uh, back to the hypothesis. So this uh, is really after we've done our concept phase and the uh, more fine tuning process of, of testing different elements, we really want to go back and see what other major changes we can do. And first thing would be, it is really recommended to do seasonality. Now we're in November, so it's a really good time to start testing your seasonality creatives uh, for the holidays. And, you know, in, and again, in some regions that will be more relevant than in others. And this, is, this brings me to uh, localization, which is very important. It's much more than just translating your app. It's really to make sure it's localized. So here you have an example from Google and we want to make sure uh, that we are using the creatives in the right uh, region and making sure to adapt. So if we are looking at like a map or a traveling app, we really want to make sure that the visuals are speaking in the same uh, region. A, or any really any other uh, region, you really want to test it and uh, to do again the uh, the market research and the other research and make sure that you can localize and uh, get the best results for your app. Um, and this is again, it requires some competitors analysis in that uh, specific region, but it does really pay off once you are correctly localizing your creatives, you can really make your app stand out and succeed. We are going to conclude this. Hagar, thank you so much for uh, spending time and talking on this panel. Um, thank Nadia, thank you as well. Um, thank you, you guys so are much. great. You guys are awesome. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great evening.